So, so great to hear the very familiar sound of the Rutgers fight song and our awesome band. Thank you so much. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. Great way to get us kicked off here. Welcome, everybody, to Rutgers Football Virtual Fan Day. I'm Chris Carlin, and it's fantastic to get a chance to spend some time with you and with Coach Ciano in just a few minutes to talk some Rutgers football. Now, if you haven't sent in a question for Coach yet, you can still do it on Twitter right now. Send in your question with the hashtag RUFanDay, and we will ask Coach, who will be joining us in just a moment. But we got to get started right here. We got to get hyped up. We got to get fired up. And there is nothing that hypes you up more than the Jersey Factor. are the heartbeat of Rutgers football. You're the ones that get us ready to take on the Big Ten. And look, we know it's spring, and we'd all much rather right now be at SHI Stadium getting ready for the spring game. But we're doing the right thing. We're doing what we need to do, and we're going to have so many great times together soon. So if we can't be there today, let's be here together to celebrate some Rutgers football. Now, we know that there's something you always love about the spring game, and that is the poster. This year, it's no different. Your opportunity to get the poster is very easy. All you have to do is follow the directions on the screen. Visit go.rutgers.edu backslash FB poster to have an official Rutgers football spring poster mailed your way. That's go.rutgers.edu backslash FB poster. Okay, the man you have been waiting for, he is back home on the banks, and he is with us now. Rutgers head coach Greg Schiano joins us, and coach, great to be with you. How you doing? Doing well, Chris. Great to be with you. I appreciate you uh, taking time to do this, and appreciate all our fans that are uh, tuned in. Thrilled to do it, coach. It's always good to talk Rutgers football, and we're living in some unprecedented times. There's no doubt about that with all the things that we have faced. But all things considered, are you pleased with what you've been able to get done so far? You know, uh, like you said, in the environment that we find ourselves, I am pleased. Our staff is working incredibly hard, uh, first and foremost, to make sure that the players are all safe and their families. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's my biggest job is making sure that our staff and their families and then our players and their families are, are safe. But ab above and beyond that, I think our staff has done a great job of teaching our guys our systems, uh, a great job of recruiting, which you do what you can virtually. But uh, everyone's working hard. There's a, there's a focused, concentrated effort. And uh, I'm really proud of our players for the way that they're responding. It's, it's been neat to watch. Coach, what has been the most challenging aspect of this for you and your staff? 
Well, I think just not being together, right? Like everybody out there is going through this, this time of being isolated and not being with the people that, uh, that, you, that you love, that you work with, that you care for, uh, and not being able to really implement our culture. You know, we started, we had, we had really three good months of it, and I really was uh, encouraged by the way our program was moving forward. So we're trying to do that in every way possible. It's, uh, it's definitely been interesting. All right, Coach, we've got some questions from some fans. And again, if you want to get your question in for Coach, you can tweet it to us at hashtag RUFanDay. We've got a couple of questions uh, on, the, on the phone lines as well for Coach. Let's get to our first one. This is from Ryan O'Connor on Twitter, who wants to know, Coach, now that you're back for a second time, what's your favorite thing about the school and the program, and how different is it for you from the first time around? Well, it's not a lot different. I tell you, uh, the campus is different. That's for sure. What a what a great improvement to the to the Rutgers campus. But our fans are still the best. And you know, I look at it as I watch us attack this virus, the state of New Jersey and Metro New York. Just the 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 way that everybody's come together, the toughness that, that the New Jersey and New York fans um, and the people as a group have exhibited, working together. Um, unselfishness, trying to do what we're told to do. And, you know, I like I liken that to our fan base. You know, it was always so exciting to, to walk into Rutgers and now SHI Stadium and see a fan base that just really understood the game, understood our school, and uh, was really very supportive. I can't wait to get back into that environment. All right, Coach, let's hit our first call of the day. Jeff from Glen Ridge is up first. Jeff, you're on with Coach Sam. How you doing? All right, thanks, Chris, and welcome back, Coach. Great to have you back on the banks. So my first question is, what has it been like to recruit players digitally without being able to bring them in person to campus? Well, it's, it's definitely been different. Um, again, I appreciate your call, and it's a great question. Um, what we've done is really work, you know, we had developed some really strong relationships before the, the virus uh, caused these changes. So what we've tried to do is just build upon that. And we have a great team uh, um, in our IT department, in our video department, uh, promotions department that have thankfully um, equipped us with things that we can do online, whether it be videos that we show. But at the end of all of that, it comes down to our coaches being on, whether it's WebEx or Zoom or whatever it is we're using, developing and continuing to build those relationships. Because as I said all along, the first go around, and I'll say it again now, we're looking for certain people. We're looking for guys that fit our program, Rutgers men that, that are tough, that want to be part of it, that uh, are men that have real character and values, not only the ability to play football. So it, it has been a challenge, but one that our staff has really stepped up and uh, continue to develop those relationships electronically. All right, Coach, our next question comes in on Twitter from John Benna. Hey, Coach, any plans for updating the uniforms next year or for 2021? Yeah, yeah, we've, uh, we've kind of changed the uniforms a little bit. Uh, not that I find that to be the biggest task on my list, but uh, I do think it's important. I think, uh, as, as I've often said to players, I don't want a bunch of robots out there. I like guys that express their individuality. Are there things that we're going to do that make our team our team? Yeah, that we that we stick to certain tenants. But I like to see guys, you know, I've always said when they look good, they feel good. When they feel good, they play well. And, and that's that's what we're looking for. We'll have a nice uniform, a classy uniform, one that will represent Rutgers in, in our great state well. All right, Coach, let's hit another call. We've got Denise in Neptune. She's up next. Denise, you're on with Coach Ciano. Hi, Coach. Welcome back to New Jersey. Very excited for what's to come. Um, tell me about what you remember most last time you were coaching at Rutgers and how you're going to build on that same excitement that you left off with us back then. Well, I think, you know, when you look back, we had some great moments as a program, uh, some great games in Rutgers Stadium. Uh, but really, it's the people. It's the people of New Jersey. My, my, almost my entire family is here uh, and my extended family, all the fans, all the people of Rutgers. We love Rutgers, me and my whole family. Uh, and it's coming home. You know, I've said it many times. I'm getting a second chance. God's given me a second chance at my dream job. And uh, I've learned a lot in between my first go around and this one. 
and uh, can't wait to capitalize on all that. We, got, we have a great opportunity here in the Big Ten Conference, what I think is the greatest conference in college football, and uh, for all the right reasons. And now we have a, we have a big mountain to climb, and we're, we're, we're getting started on doing it. Coach, I know one big part of that has been the crowd. And you think about some of those special nights and, and games that we've had here before, the crowd has always been a massive factor. There's no doubt about it. And I, and I mentioned it earlier, an educated crowd. This is a crowd who loves their Rutgers and loves their Rutgers football. So they study it. They, they stay in touch with it. They know what's going on. And I love that. I love the passion that our fans show. And we're going to need them. I mean, it's, this is a big challenge now. We're, we're going to have to chop every single game, every single play, every single timeout. We're going to need that crowd big time to uh, be able to be, be competitive first and then to win and then to become champions. Those are the steps we have to take. And uh, the fans are going to be such a big part of it. They make things happen. I, I don't know if all the fans understand that yet. Uh, even after 11 years, they create the momentum. They create the energy. And no doubt our players feed off it. And it makes it difficult for our opponent, right? There's hidden yards that are going to be there because of our fans. You know, you don't think that's a big deal when you get that jump off sides on the, on the illegal procedure by the offense. It changes a whole set of downs, which can change a whole game. So uh, I'm going to be talking about it a lot going forward. We need our fans, period. All right, Coach, let's hit our next question on Twitter. It's from Margaret, the great nurse, Meg, checking in, Coach. Wants to know if you're going to be bringing back any old Rutgers traditions like the team is leaving the locker room, that video that used to come up right before uh, they got down to the field, anything like that that you're looking to bring back? There is uh, several things, and I think there's some new things that we may introduce, but I, I do. You know, when, when we started some of the traditions – back in 2001, like the Scarlet Walk. Now that's something that is just taken for granted. But, you know, that was something new. We had to build upon that. And slowly our fan base grew with that. Uh, we are going to bring back some traditions. And I look forward to our fans, our young fans, helping us start some new traditions as we move forward. So uh, looking back, being in the present, and also looking forward, I, I can't wait for that. All right, we've got another question that just came in on Twitter, Coach. Uh, this is from Steve. Coach, you'd like to know what you consider uniquely New Jersey that's an advantage over other schools. Well, hey, there's a lot. I mean, think about being in New Jersey. Number one, the people are, without a doubt, the biggest. The people, the toughness, the grit, the, the loyal nature of the people in our area, that, that is number one. But as you think about it, where in the country can you be you know, 40 minutes from the greatest city in the world, 35 minutes from some of the most beautiful beaches in the, in the country. And then you want to go to the mountains, hop in the car, and you're 45 minutes from the mountains. It is a special, special place. We have an unbelievable academic institution. And that's something that I, you know, I think kind of gets overlooked sometimes when you're talking athletics, especially what President Barchi has been able to do, he and our board, bringing back the medical school into the, into the, into the university. It's just, it's hitting on all cylinders right now. And one cylinder that's got to get it going is our football program. And we're here to do that. All right, coach, going to call halftime here for a second. We're going to get back to some more questions from fans in a few minutes. But if there's one thing that we have learned over the past few weeks, it's the incredible spirit of so many people on the front lines of this fight against COVID-19 and those who work in the community to really just keep us going every day. So right now, we want to take a minute to thank them.
Coach, we know that so many in the Rutgers community are part of this fight, but as I said, just also the ones who were not even necessarily on the front lines, the people who were just keeping us going each and every day. Uh, I just had a, a heartfelt thank you to all those people. You know, it was listed. There's so many people that you don't even think about, but uh, all the people that are working so hard and putting their life on the line, call it what it is, their lives and their families' lives on the line. When they're working at the grocery store, they're working at the gas station. You know, that's not usually what comes to mind when you're talking about the front lines, but there's just so many people, the medical people that are doing incredible things. I just, I'm so proud of the people of New Jersey and Metro New York, the way that we have come together and we're fighting this thing. It's a, it's a worthy opponent, right? We know that, but I'm so proud of the way everyone's fighting it and coming together and we're going to get through this as, as this area always does. And we're going to come out of it stronger and I can't wait to be a part of it. It's been so remarkably uplifting to get to see how this has really brought us all together. And we know it's a sunny spring day. We know that we would rather be together at SHI stadium, but in our own way, we are always together and we continue to see that every day throughout the state of Rutgers. Coach, the block R is ubiquitous. It is everywhere. Wow, that's a big word, Chris. Ubiquitous. <laughs> and, come on now. Let's not make this a test today. It is. I, 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 am, I am so glad to see that. And, and you know how I feel about that block R. That goes a long way back, right? 2000, we get the job. And we want to, as an athletic department and as a school, just get one logo that really unifies. And when you turn that TV on, no matter what sport, you see that block R, you know it's Rutgers. And I can't tell you, just being out recruiting this year, you know, one of the first things when I got hired, I, I talked to our marketing people, I get 100,000 magnetic block R's to be put on cars across our state and across the region. And I can't tell you, when I walk out of a school and I'm sitting in the car doing work and I look up and I see a block R, it just gets me fired up. And I know it does the same for our recruits. Don't ever underestimate. You know, when, when you're in a region and you keep seeing Rutgers here and Rutgers there, Rutgers everywhere, you know, that was our biggest challenge the first go-round. Make Rutgers something important. Well, it's not changed totally, right? It's much bigger now. And I'll tell you what, with what our basketball teams are doing and all our athletic teams, I mean, I was so fired up to be at that rack and see what our basketball team, both men's and women's team, it's a shame that they didn't get an opportunity to go, both of them go into that tournament and show them what they could, what they could do. But Things are really happening in, in Rutgers athletics, and that block R represents a ton. So to see those flags, wow, that makes me feel great. And there's great things ahead, and that R flag is going to be flying all the time. Well, Coach, now we get a, a special treat, and we always love seeing this guy's face. He is Rutgers Nation's favorite son. Eric Legrand joins us right now from his home. Eric, how you doing, pal? I am doing good, Chris. Day 44 quarantine for me, but uh, I'm staying disciplined and doing what I need to do. E, what have you been up to these days? What are you doing to fill your time? I know you've been into the NFL draft the last couple of days. Oh, you know, yeah, that, that's, that's been huge for us, you know, the NFL draft, with being able to, you know, see our teams go. My Denver Broncos, I'm all happy about them, but uh, hmm. I'm doing some Netflix shows, but also staying busy doing home therapy. I'm thankful that I have the means to do it at home, so I'm staying active here picking up, learning some Spanish to keep my mind stimulated. And yeah, just trying all different, you know, new things to just keep going during this time and stay motivated. You know, coach, uh, to me, probably the best moment of your homecoming press conference was getting to see the two of you together again. Well, first off, hola, Big E. You've been studying <laughs> Spanish, huh, big guy? All, all right, right, I got you. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. All right, let's get one thing straight. I was in that man cave, e. That night that I snuck back down here to check out Rutgers, uh, I came over to the man cave and I saw it, but I also did get to see where that training area is. 
Now, you better be hitting that. I'm going to call Miss Karen and make sure she's doubling you up on those sets. I don't want to hear any of this, uh, oh, I'm sore, none of that stuff. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Coach, Hey, coach. you know I'm chopping through it. I'm, I'm getting it. I just got my arm biking yesterday. I'll be on my leg bike tomorrow. Stay in the frame the next day. So we're staying active and staying strong over here. Keep chopping, baby. I love that, Ian. You know, you know how much I love you and, and our whole family and the whole Rutgers family does. And I, I mean that when I say it. I, I picture you during this time. I picture you up there. That, now, that is a great man cave, I got to say. Yeah. You did yourself some justice there, but um, you, you are doing a great job of staying ready because when that cure comes, you are going to be ready to attack it. And we're both going back to that spot right there in that stadium. We're walking off together. So I can't, I can't wait. I believe it's going to happen. And I know you do too. And God's got his hand on you, buddy. Trust yeah. me. Absolutely, Coach. And that's why we're working so hard with Team LaGrande and the Christopher Dana Reed Foundation to, you know, keep on funding this cure and keeping the hope for the 5.6 million people that are dealing with some sort of paralysis in this world. And, you know, during, during times like this, this has a huge effect on all of us, you know, whether if it's staying inside and not trying to contract this terrible virus because of what it could do to people that have secondary conditions like myself, or now just even keeping the funding going so we can keep that hope, so we can fund these clinical trials, so we can get out of these wheelchairs. Yeah, I know you've uh, got some great news uh, regarding your annual Walk to Believe. Fill us in, bud. Yeah, so my walk to believe this year, as you know, Coach and Chris, is my 10-year anniversary in October. So we wanted to make it something special this year at SHI Stadium. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we can't do that at uh, SHI Stadium this year. So we're going to switch it up. We're not going to cancel it. On June 6th, we're still going to have it, make it virtually. We want everyone to be able to walk that still 5K walk through their neighborhood, keep the social distancing rules in play, but walk around your neighborhood walk around, whatever that's available, a track, whatever it is, run if you want to do it. And we want people to register at ChristopherReed.org slash AWTB. And we want to see everyone out there in the community still supporting and believing in our cause because the mission doesn't stop because of COVID-19. It just gets even stronger. And we want you guys to be a part of it. Again, it's ChristopherReed.org slash AWTB. Coach, uh, you see the two of you together, I swear, you could take the comedy act on the road. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. But that didn't start now. Let me tell you, he used, to, he used to get after me pretty good when I was coach. Certain guys always had a little bit of leeway. He was one of them. But that's because he showed up every day. If you show up, you get a little leeway. I, I, will, I will say that, too. You definitely give me some leeway. I will say that week up leading up to the game, Arby, got on me a little bit, but that let the fire under me, Coach Sal. I will say you did give me my, lead, my leeway because I just show up each and every day to, to get my best. Yeah, you did. But I, I kind of knew which buttons to push with you. Eh? Don't forget that either. <laughs> I, I, exactly. Exactly. You did, though. But uh, get it back to what I was saying, Chris. I wanted to just explain that. We want to do this event from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the wonderful DJ Yoshi, who we all know, at 7 p.m. We're going to have on uh, streaming off of TeamLegrand.org. We're going to have a lot. DJ's going to be live. And um He's going to be playing a bunch of music to celebrate the all-around occasion. So just be a part of it on June 6th, and let it be something special for everybody. It's going to be great. Can't wait to see it. Eric, it's always phenomenal to see you, and it's an incredible event every year. It might be a little bit different this year, but that doesn't mean it's going to be any less special. Good seeing you, man. Hang in. Hey, great to see you guys. Go are you. <laughs> all righty. Eric Legrand, of course, and as for the fans right now, I want to remind you to keep an eye out because we've got more exclusive content and some binge-watching opportunities coming up from Rutgers football. We're going to be featuring a Glory Days segment, taking a look back at the success of Coach Chiano Era's Coach Chiano Era Part 1, and coming up on May 9th, Big Ten Network is going to have Rutgers Day. In the meantime, though, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's our new YouTube channel, Rutgers Got Football. Okay, Coach, let's get back to some questions from the fans. Bill Brennan on Twitter wants to know what you're looking forward to the most in the coming season, and what did you miss about Rutgers while you were away? Well, I'm looking forward to so many things, but the biggest thing is to take a team, a coaching staff, and a fan base and get started playing games. And uh, that, that, you know, I love everything about being a head football coach, building the, building the roster, 
developing the players, all the things that go into it, develop them as young men. But those three, three and a half hours of game day are, are really, really special. And you don't get many of them. You know, our sport's different than most other sports. You get 12 of them, and if you're good enough, then you get a 13th, 14th, and ultimately, if you're the best, you get a 15th chance to play as a college football team, and you get a 15th chance to coach. And that's our goal, right? We want to we want to play in that 15th game, and we want to win it. Um, but we got a long way to go, and that's what our challenge is. Uh, we're focused on that. Can't wait to get out there for that first game with our team, whenever that may be. I, I don't know when that's going to be, but when it is, I can't wait to lead lead our team out that tunnel. And, and to see uh, a bunch of hard work because our players are working incredibly hard. They did before this COVID-19 and they continue to, whether it was the winter workouts they were going through, um, whether it was learning a scheme. And, you know, one of the things people have asked is, you know, do the, through this adversity, you know, how are you, how are you getting through it? And, and we have some positives too that have come out from this, you know, like in installing our offense and defense, our guys have worked incredibly hard at that. Well, if it was a practice day, the amount that we install now electronically in a week, that would go in in one day. So hopefully being able to go slower piece by piece, I'm hoping our players are are getting a real thorough understanding. We'll do it again over the summer. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe that will be a positive to come out of this whole this whole COVID-19 adversity. So we're looking forward to that. I know I am, too. And uh, I, I just miss the people. I miss, you know, everything from uh, my favorite pizza joint down there, Mancini's, to you go wherever you want to go, right? It's been unbelievable to be back in Jersey, back with the people. The people are the best. All right, Coach, next question on Twitter from John Newman. It's one that every New Jersey native needs to answer. What is your favorite Bruce Springsteen song and why? Well, there you go. That is the one of the unique New Jersey questions, right? And uh, I think you know it, Chris. It's uh, Born to Run. Now, fan base, don't get nervous. That doesn't mean that it's going to be, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust. Uh, but that is, without a doubt, uh, my favorite. It always has been. But Spring- Bruce Springsteen is, is such a classic part of New Jersey, right? And, and he represents so much what New Jersey is about. You know, born and raised, has never, ever forgotten where he's from, still lives here, still takes care of the people of New Jersey one of the great all-time performers, but never, ever forgot where he came from and what he's about. And I think that's why so many New Jersey people identify with him and his music, because it's, it's real, it's tough, and it's uniquely New Jersey. All right, Coach, let's hit the phones again. We've got Mike. He's in Hoboken up next. Mike, you're on with Coach Chiano. Hey, Coach. Uh, First and foremost, hope you and the family are doing well. And I think I speak for everyone when I say it's great to see you back. Uh, Obviously, recruiting uh, has been something we've done extremely well in the last few months, and uh, we've seen a huge uptick. What importance do Jersey guys have to that? And and what's your vision as far as, you know, keeping talent in state for years to come? Well, Mike, I appreciate your your well wishes for my family and, and same back to you and yours and to all our fans. Uh, and to all the New Jersey, Metro New York area, the people that are really fighting so hard. Um, when it comes down to our recruiting, I'm really excited. And it, uh, you know, I've never been a guy that's worried too much about all the stars and the rankings. But what I am concerned with is getting the right guys for Rutgers. And so far, we've been able to do that. You know, the short time we had back in December to put together uh, a class and then following it up with some additions for the 2020 class. And we continue to add to the 2020 class every day. Uh, great walk-ons. You know, walk-on program is so important to our football program. You know, you, you look back over the course of our first tenure, over an 11-year period, seven of our captains were, were started as walk-ons, earned a scholarship, and became captains of our football team. And uh, went on, some of them, to play in the National Football League. So. To think that this recruiting thing is a science, that's, that's a myth. Right? There's, it's definitely an art form, and you make mistakes. But when you talk about recruiting New Jersey, Metro New York, and then really the entire state of Rutgers, it's so important. And why so much in New Jersey and Metro New York? Because those are the people we know the best. Our staff is uniquely from that area. Right? We have relationships that go back 20, 30 years with some of these coaches and and the players' families, I mean, I hate to say it, I guess I like to say it, but I hate to say it, 
I'm getting a little older, so I'm recruiting some of my players' parent, uh, children. So think about that. You know, you're talking about generational New Jersey, New York people, and uh, it's exciting. And we need to continue to do it. It's, you know, every single day our staff wakes up knowing that there's great football players and great people in our area, and they have to stay home. That's what we're going to win championships with. New Jersey tough kids, New Jersey smart kids, guys that are from New Jersey, New York, that metropolitan area that understand the traditions of Rutgers football and want to be a part of it. So that's our challenge every single day. And there's not a day that goes by that our staff and I aren't working at that diligently. So we need your help, though, fans. Again, it, it keeps coming back to making Rutgers relevant in our community, whether it's block R's, whether it's social media, whatever it is, we need your help in recruiting these classes. All right, Coach, next question on Twitter from Bob Martin. Wants to know, how aggressive is the defense going to be this year? Well, it's going to be one that's, uh, you know, that's our trademark, aggressive defense. And Rob Smith and the defensive staff are doing a great job of getting it all implemented. I have great faith in them. You know, there, there's, there's some really fine coaches uh, on the defensive staff. You talk about Fran Brown and Jim Panagos, and someone that's been with me for years, Bob Frazier. Uh, you know, Rob has a great staff. They're working really hard, and they're going to get after people. And you know what? Sometimes you got to take a shot, right? You got to go and be a little bit aggressive. If, if it bites you in the rear end, so what? You know, Sean Gleason and the offensive staff, they'll come back and find a way to, to, to uh, answer that call. So it's going to be an aggressive football team, not only on defense, but on offense and on special teams. But you know what? That really represents what we are and, and what New Jersey is, right? An aggressive group of people that aren't afraid to fight. So that's what we're going to get and can't wait to do it. Don't know when that's going to be, but can't wait to show it. All right, next caller, Renee, North Brunswick, up next. Renee, how are you? Good. Coach, welcome back home to New Jersey. We're so happy to have you here. Um, I'm just curious, what are you looking forward to doing the most on Rutgers' first home game day? Well, Rutgers' first home game day will – hopefully be my first game back, right, as long as the schedule stays as is. And I hope to I, – I can't wait to lead the team out of the tunnel back here at Rutgers where I'm supposed to be. I just can't wait to see that. You know, I, I think back to my first game. It was uh, – I was up at the University of Buffalo, and I was so excited and, and so charged up, and, and then reality hit me. I'm standing in front of the tunnel waiting to be called out, and I realized I didn't have my game plan, my call sheet with me. So think about that. There's your first game as a Division I coach. Here we go. And uh, then rookie mistake number two took over. Rather than have somebody just go back and get it for me, I fought my way back through the team, got back to the locker room, grabbed the plan, sprinted back, fought my way back through the team, and just in a nick of time, here come the Scarlet Knights, and I found a way to lead our team up. This time, I think I'm going to be just a little more prepared. You know, it's it, it, the last, uh, what would it be now, I guess, 20 years is – it's taught me a few lessons. So hopefully I'll have the plan with me, and then we'll take the field. Can't wait. And hopefully it ends like that night did, because that ended in a victory as well. There All you right, go. Coach, last one here, and it's an important one. This is from Lisa on Twitter. What is on the Sunday dinner menu in the Shiano household? Well, Chris, I think you know one of my pure joys in life is what I get to eat. <laughs> so it all depends. It all depends where we're headed. But you know, there's going to be some kind of cost involved, right? I know the medical health medical professionals tell us be careful. Well, uh, I'm going I'm to go down the way I want to go down, enjoying it. But I love just being being around. You know, having a family dinner. One of the again, I talk about finding um, opportunity in this adversity. One of the neat things for me, my whole family has been uh, in our house, right? And we're doing the social distancing and but we've had probably 15 or 16 straight nights of family dinners. And that's something that, you know, I, I've never been able to have that many consecutive as a coach doing what I've done for the last 32 years. So I don't take that for granted. I consider it a blessing. And uh, I hope that others in the midst of all this adversity are able to find some real opportunities for things that maybe they otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. Well, Coach, it's been awesome to spend some time with you here today, and I know the fans always love hearing from you. We appreciate it so much. Well, thank you, Chris, and it's, it's great to be back working with you. We had a lot of fun first go-around, and I can't wait to do it again. And 
I want to thank our, our entire fan base. Um, you're such a big part of who we are and what we do. And as I said earlier in the, in the telecast, we need you. We need you big time. We're playing for big stakes in the Big Ten Conference. And uh, without you, we can't get it done. So we're going to raise our game. I promise you that. And we need you to raise yours. And, yeah, does that sound like a challenge? It is a challenge because every one of us has to raise a challenge, raise our bar a little bit because what we have in front of us is a, is a big, big challenge. And that's to win the Big Ten Conference and eventually the national championship. So let's get going. Coach, stay healthy, stay safe to you and your family, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Chris. Everybody be safe. God bless. One thing we can't do is we can't let you guys get away today without one of our favorite game day rituals. And we don't care that you're home. It is time to get after it right now and follow the lead of our band, the CHOP crew, the spirit groups. Let them hear you wherever you are. Let's go. Hit it. Are you 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 Tremendous. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to do it again together. Now, look, uh, just a reminder, you want to get that spring poster, go to go.rutgers.edu backslash FB poster, and we will mail it out to you again. It's go.rutgers.edu backslash FB poster. And mark the calendars. We're going to binge watch together on Big Ten Network's Rutgers Day that is coming up on May the 9th. Well, that's going to do it for us, but we want to leave you with another one of your favorite game day traditions. Be healthy, stay safe, and sing it. Don't stop believing.